explore the classic 1944 film to have and have not for an unforgettable mix of romance, adventure, and suspense. Directed by Howard Hawks, it stars the famous Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Buckhall. This movie is more than just a part of film history. It's full of interesting stories, both from its making and the experiences of those who watch it. Think about when you first saw this film. Maybe it was on a relaxed Sunday afternoon or as part of a classic movie binge. It's remembered not only for its content, but also for the personal memories people associate with it. The film is well known for the strong on-screen connection between Bogart and Buckhall and its exciting spy storyline. It's a mix of humorous, surprising, and even sad moments taking viewers on an emotional journey. Apart from what's on screen, what's your most memorable experience or personal connection with this movie? Share your stories in the comments. Whether it's about how this movie moved you, it's linked to an important event in your life, or a special memory of watching it with someone dear, your stories contribute to the ongoing legacy of the film. Every movie experience is unique. By sharing yours, let's appreciate the lasting appeal of To Have and Have Not. Howard Hawks directed To Have and Have Not, a film famous for starting the real-life romance between Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Buckhall. This led them to work together again in movies like The Big Sleep and Key Largo. Many people compare this movie to Casablanca because they share a lot of similar ideas and styles, but it's really its own story. The movie is based on a book by Ernest Hemingway, but the script, written by William Faulkner, changes a lot of it. Like Casablanca, it's set during World War II, but in Martinique instead of Casablanca. Both movies have a main setting in like a hotel or a club, with a piano that's important to the story. Bogart plays the main role in both and starts off as a guy who doesn't want to get involved in the war, but then changes his mind. The love story in this movie is different because Bogart and Buck Hall were actually in love in real life. This makes their romance on screen feel more real and intense compared to Casablanca, where the love story ends with the couple going their separate ways. In this movie, they end up leaving together, giving it a happier ending. It's not just a copy of Casablanca. The acting, especially by Bogart, Buck Hall, and Walter Brennan, who plays Eddie, really makes the movie stand out. Hawks does a great job directing, especially with the way he uses clever talking to get around the strict rules of movie making back then. The movie also uses visuals like the way dancers move during a piano scene to add a sense of romance. In short, to have and have not is more than just a movie similar to Casablanca. It's a great mix of romance, war story, and impressive acting that makes it a classic on its own. The movie had a lasting influence, not just when it first came out, but also on the careers of its actors. One of the stars, after leaving the movie industry in 1959, made a successful transition to TV, continuing to play bad guy roles. This shows the wide range of skills and lasting popularity of the actors in the movie. When Lauren Buckhall was cast in the movie at 18, she was mainly known as a model, having appeared on the cover of Harper's Bazaar. Her photo on the magazine caught the eye of director Howard Hawke's wife, Nancy Slim Keith, leading to Buckhall's important role in the movie. This role really started her successful acting career. Humphrey Bogart and Buckhall's on-screen chemistry didn't just stop with this movie. In 1951, they worked together again in Bold Venture, a radio show. In this series, their characters were similar to those in the movie, but set in Havana, similar to the setting in Ernest Hemingway's original story. This shows that their screen partnership was popular and could attract audiences in different types of media. These points highlight how the movie greatly influenced its actors and the entertainment world. It left a strong and lasting effect on movie history and helped the careers of its stars grow in different areas of entertainment. Delving into the historical aspects surrounding the film, a notable fact is Humphrey Bogart's physical stature. At 18 and a half years old, a medical examination recorded his height as 5 feet 7 inches. This detail, though seemingly minor, played a role in his on-screen presence, contributing to his unique appeal as an actor. Years after Bogart's death, his legacy was celebrated in an unusual way. The television horror series Tales from the Crypt in 1989 featured Bogart posthumously through technological wizardry. By combining old movie footage with a voice and body double, the show created an episode titled You Murderer, where Bogart received top billing. 
The episode also included performances by John Lithgow and Isabella Rossellini, the latter humorously parodying her mother, Ingrid Bergman. A fascinating backstory relates to one of the film's actresses, Dolores Morin. Her journey to Hollywood began unexpectedly in Chico, California. In May 1941, while participating in a contest to elect a fair queen, Morin caught the attention of boxer and actor Max Baer. Baer saw potential in her and proposed she pursue a career in films. However, it was not Baer but Sally Bayano, a talent scout for Warner Brothers, who discovered Morin at an Elks Club picnic. Bayano quickly arranged a screen test, leading to Morin signing a contract with Warner Brothers. Her early roles included appearances in The Hard Way and Yankee Doodle Dandy. Interestingly, Morin was the girl Bear had spoken about to RKO Pictures, unaware that she had already embarked on her film career. Her entry into Hollywood was further supported by Bear, Swenson, and others who introduced her to the Hollywood social scene and arranged for acting, dancing, and singing lessons, enhancing her early career. These anecdotes provide a deeper understanding of the era and the circumstances of the film's production. The path to Hollywood stardom in the 1940s was filled with unexpected turns as seen in the stories of Bogart and Morin. Their experiences reflect a time when talent scouting and personal endorsements played significant roles in shaping careers. These stories from behind the scenes add another layer to the appreciation of the film and its historical context. Lauren Buckhall, famous for her role in a well-known movie, had a strong background in the arts. She started with ballet as a young girl, but soon turned her attention to acting in her teenage years. This change led to a significant journey in the movie industry. Her personal life was closely linked with her career. She had three children, each making their own way in life. Her son, Sam Robards, also became an actor. Stephen H. Bogart and Leslie Bogart, though not as well known, were also part of her contribution to the entertainment world. Buckhall's influence went beyond movies and theater. In 1996, she was honored in a special way her image was put on a United States postage stamp as part of the Legends of American Music series. This was a major honor, putting her in the company of famous American songwriters like Harold Arlen, Johnny Mercer, and Dorothy Fields. Being on this stamp show would how she affected American culture, not just through her movies. These aspects of Buckhall's life and career show the different sides of her journey in the entertainment industry. From a dancer to an actress, being a mother, and being recognized nationally with the postage stamp, all these aspects highlight a woman whose influence reached many areas. Her story gives more insight into the movie and its cultural importance, showing how the lives of those who made it were connected to wider cultural stories. The movie, directed by Howard Hawks, is often considered the best movie version of a book by Ernest Hemingway. This opinion is especially shared by Charles M. Oliver, an expert on Hemingway's work. What's really interesting is that the script was a joint effort between Hemingway and another famous writer, William Faulkner, although they never actually met. Faulkner's role in turning Hemingway's story into a movie script makes the film's story and conversations unique. Talking about Hemingway's own life, he had a strong connection to Joseph, Oregon. He owned a working ranch there, which is a significant part of the local history. The Indian Lodge Motel in that area shows this connection by displaying many of his pictures, helping visitors and people from the area feel closer to Hemingway's legacy. In the movie, Lauren Buckhall's character is heavily influenced by Slim Keith, the wife of Howard Hawks. Keith had such a big impact that some of the lines said by Buckhall's character were actually taken from her. In a surprising move, screenwriter Jules Firthman even suggested that Keith should have asked for credit for the script because her personality and words greatly influenced Buckhall's role. Putting all these elements together shows a clear and interesting background to the movie's creation. It highlights the unseen collaboration between famous writers and the personal marks left by the people involved. So, the film is not just a piece of entertainment, but also a meeting point of interesting personal stories and literary history.